the value of it a little bit if you start selling all this stuff on on eBay. So with that, uh, you you must hold on to it for at least a year. Uh, That's if fair. you yeah, if you with, without selling it. And uh, and those prizes include a, co- a coffee mug. <laughs> Nick saying, "What have you got me into, man?" Hey, <laughs> a coffee everybody mug, can use more coffee mugs. A hat <laughs> and a shirt. Uh, but we uh, give us a call eight hundred two two four nine zero nine zero with the answer. And here is the question: Jill owns a twenty seventeen Tahoe. She had a job delivering blood to Savannah. And last, uh, she did this last summer. Something to do with some blood that she was transporting cost her over two thousand bucks in car repairs. How did someone? How did some of the blood that she was transporting cost her two thousand bucks out of us out of her pocket? If you know the answer, give us a call. And again, that's eight hundred two two four nine zero nine zero. And we will go over to the callers and let's go. To the next caller. I don't see a name there. Welcome to the CNC Auto Show. How can we help you? Hey, Aaron. This is Jeff. I'm sorry. I forgot to put my name in there. Um, I don't have a question for Nick this time, but this, this I got a question for you. This was mm-hmm. bound to happen to me. The last five cars I've purchased, I've basically bought them online, sight unseen. And uh, three of them were uh, Porsches that Nick could have helped me with. But this one mm-hmm. is a 1985 Dodge Shelby Charger. I just bought a week ago without asking anybody if I could find anybody to work on it. And I've yet to find anybody that will touch it. And my last guy recommended I call you. Um, mm-hmm. Do you guys have the ability to, to, to work on an old 38 year old pocket rocket? So you mentioned this is a 1995. I think it was 85. 85. A 1985 Dodge. Right. Oh, okay. Dodge Shelby Charger. Where, yeah, here's where the problem comes in on those. Uh, of course, that, that vehicle did have somewhat of a computer system. But before I even get into that, I'll say, what uh, what type issue are you having with the car? Well, um, it's basically a drivability issue. It kind of has a, a miss um, mm. once it warms up. It, it cranks. Um, and I knew this when I bought it. I bought it just because of the cosmetics. It, it doesn't look like a, you know, a 38 year old. The interior is great. The, the seats are yeah. kind of special with embroidered with the Carroll Shelby logo, things like that. I had one in 84 and I uh, mm-hmm. thought you could go back, but you can't. So it's just and, really and a drivability so. issue that I can't get anybody to, that has OBD one stuff anymore, you know? So. Like you're saying. Well, that's where the problem, and Nick, see if you agree with this, uh, of what I'm getting ready to say. Uh, sometimes people think that um, you're, you're, uh, you just don't want to do anything that's hard or anything that's a hassle if you're working on a car, say, in the 80s or, or some even in the 90s. But what has happened, those vehicles did have somewhat of a computer system, very much more primitive than the ones that we have now but it did have a computer system. And what happened, there was specialized equipment that needed to be hooked to them so that you could read things like oxygen sensor and things to do with the fuel system. Well, over time, those those pieces of equipment either wore out or broke, and, and instead of investing in equipments that would hook to those, uh, most shops would invest in equipment that would work to later model vehicles. And so in many cases where uh, many shops are not able to work with those, plus the technicians that used to be good with them, they're just not there. As a matter of fact, uh, that one, 85, that one could have even had a carburetor, computer control carburetor. And it's possible. possible. No, um, it's, it's still injected turbocharged. So it, it's, oh, they used okay. to be, you know, right. probably right. two or yeah. three. Nick, would you agree with that, that you've seen that happen over the years? Oh, yeah, very much so. I mean, even with, you know, Eurofix, we've kind of phased out of, having to work on some of the older stuff because we just don't have the tools anymore. And like you said, the, I mean, parts too. finding parts is a very difficult thing. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm going to put you on hold just for a second. We are going to pull over to the side of the road just for a second, but we will be right back with more of the CNC auto show. CNC auto show. We are live here in Nashville. We're talking to Nick Novak here 
uh, that lives in Nashville and also a lead technician at one of the top European repair facilities in the country. And uh, very fortunate today. We are talking with... A gentleman with a... I his name was Jeff, correct? Say that again? Jeff. That's right, yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Hey, Jeff. Welcome back to the show. Yes, sir. One thing that Nick and I was talking about during the break is we did get the opportunity to talk a little bit about why it's real difficult to work on that type vehicle, but we didn't get the opportunity to tell you how much we love those type vehicles. Yeah. And uh, that's a, Nick, that's you a, were saying... That's a really you, cool car. You don't, you don't see those very often, especially, you know, like you said, if it's very, like, clean cosmetically, that's not an easy thing to find. Mm-hmm. You're so, right. That's, Jeff, that's I'm going to mention one thing that we do. And, uh, and, and, Nick, I don't know if you've heard of somebody doing this. It, sometimes it's hard to make a decision on if you can help a customer or not. It is. And here's the tricky part. You, you take the vehicle in to repair you give it to a technician, and then a technician spends an hour, two hours, three hours trying to see if they can repair it, finds out they can't, and then the technician, of course, is um, does, is not very happy because the car is right. gone. So we have a thing called an untraditional repair. An untraditional repair is if we take in a vehicle like that, I have a conversation with the uh, with the person that owns the vehicle. I let them know that we can take it in, there's a chance we can do something, chance we can't do something, um, but it costs X amount of dollars to try and see if I can get a piece of equipment to communicate with it or locate the problem without that. And the only thing is if for some reason I can't, I charge you the amount <laughs> that we talked about yeah. anyway, yeah. and you don't get mad with us and you, you say, well, I knew that that could happen. So that's our untraditional repair that we use, and it seems to work very well. It kind of starts a, a situation on a car like that out on a good note. Now, some we know we can't do anything, so there's no need in mentioning that. We don't want to waste somebody's money. Yeah. Uh, but some we some we can, but we don't know until we get into it a little way. So that's something that we could do if you decided to. Well, yeah, I, I don't have any choice. I either have to pay a stupid tax and uh, unload it. There's a huge cult following in this for this car. I just can't find anybody, you know, here in this town. Um, so I have two choices. I can bring it to you. Uh, which, which which location is the best one to take it to? Downtown or that Marquez would be the downtown or, uh, location. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Well, then um, if you can't do it, and, and money's really not an option. The reason I bought this car is because this is the first car I've bought in a long time that I paid less than the original purchase price. Most, you know, my my shade tree guy that does all my work since high school, uh-huh. I'm 60 years old, and he's an old hot rider. He's been wanting me to buy a 69 Corvette, and you can't buy a 69 Corvette for $4,000 like they sold for in 69. But I, I did buy so. this car for less than no. it was if sold we could, for. I'd buy all of them. <laughs> Well, this car I bought for less than its sticker price, so it's the first car I bought in a long time. So, I'm not really yeah. worried about the money. I mean, I, I'm even ready to put in a motor, anything. This this is a cool car. I had one in '84 for a short time. I had twins in '85, and so my wife's car was paid for a two seater. So I drove it. We got rid of the Shelby, got a four door car, and now I got another one. But I'm finding you can't go back. <laughs> Well, there's some things so, that can be done. Uh, if For you can't instance, fix on it. some vehicles, you can change the co- uh, change the computer control carburetor over to a, uh, or change some of the system over right. to a, uh, something that can be repaired on the vehicle. So, yeah, give us a call. We'll uh, we'll have that untraditional conversation. I even have a special right. run. That I, I'll be down there Tuesday. To. <laughs> I'm gonna take it down. To, I'm gonna take it downtown Tuesday and, and see. I'll call down there Monday and. Um, set up an appointment. I'll bring it down on Tuesday and leave it with you. Sound, hey, call me first. Make sure I'm back from Nashville. My right, daughter, right. I'll call you Monday. I should be. <laughs> but, but Oh, that's right. That's daughter. right. Oh, congratulations, by the way. Congratulations well, on you. your grandson. I held that new baby yesterday. It was that's beautiful a beautiful experience. experience, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, hey, I appreciate I your call, so Jeff. Far, so. No problem. We'll talk to you. Uh, all right, so Tuesday may be a little early. You might not be back Monday or Tuesday? Uh, I should be, but I'm not sure. But I I'll probably be back Monday, Monday, late Monday. Okay. Well, I'll call, I'll call Tuesday. Tuesday morning. I'll call Tuesday morning and see if you're there. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. We, Appreciate your time. Have a great day, Jeff. Appreciate the call. 
Love you, sir. Okay, the number to call yes, is 800-224-9090. And if you have a question about your car, your truck, or your SUV, you give us a call. And we are here ready to answer your automotive questions. And we were talking about um, cars and places to visit. Mm. And, of course, one place that I always love to visit is right here where we're at is Nashville. Nashville is a beautiful place to come visit. There's so many things to do. You have not only just festivals. There's like a festival going on downtown today. Yeah, CMA Fest is this weekend. Yeah. Big, big country uh, festival. music festival, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a big deal. And, of course, you have the Country Music Hall of Fame. You have just, I mean, just... A, a, a ton of different things that you oh, can yeah. do here in Nashville. And not even just Nashville. I mean, all the surrounding area, there's so many things to do in those areas, too. It's just, Hiking and bike oh, yeah. riding and motorcycle riding and yeah, just a, a, just so many here. things. And I always enjoy. So if you're looking for a great place to visit, there's no question that Nashville is on that list of, uh, of things that you can do, places that you can visit. Uh, so we've talked about some of the cars that we enjoy mm -hmm. And some of the places that we enjoy going to, and that, uh, and I want to say one more time how much I enjoy being uh, being a part of Shop Fix, uh, because those that don't know it, Shop Fix is a organization or a training uh, facility uh, that helps pretty much everyone in the automotive industry. They oh yeah, do, they Very do just so. a great job of helping. Uh, it, they're both on uh, your fix and the shop fix is on by Aaron Stokes. Yep. A fantastic person. He's just, uh, he's helped the automotive industry in many, many ways. And I'm very thankful for so many of the things that he's done. Uh, but shop fix here is one. There's just uh, it, like right now we're here and the building is pretty much empty. All uh, the classrooms yeah, hadn't started cranking up or anything like that. I was here yesterday, and if I'm not mistaken, they were having a foreman's conference here. Yes. And it was just people all over the place. Oh, and there there's was hundreds um, of people here. Yeah, hundreds and hundreds of people. And uh, and it was a, a lot out there and just everybody clapping and having fun and doing a lot of things. So we'll be right back with more of the CNC Auto Show right after these messages. <laughs> Novak, he's uh, he, and we're live here in Nashville. We are, and we're talking about cars. We're talking about places that people can go to visit. We have a tech tip quiz laying on the table, which I'll go ahead and read again. Uh, Jill owns a 2017 Tahoe. She had a job delivering blood to Savannah, Georgia, from Augusta, Georgia to Savannah, Georgia, and she was doing that last summer. And something to do with the blood that she was transporting cost her. Two thousand dollars in car repairs. If you know why it cost her two thousand bucks out of her pocket, you give us a call, and that number is eight hundred two two four nine zero nine zero. Now, here's the other great thing we have going on today. If uh, Nick Novak here is a lead technician at one of the best uh, automotive repair facilities in the country. Uh, and uh, that's Eurofix, and they do just an absolutely fantastic job. So I know if he's a lead tech there, he's got to be really, really good. Uh, works uh, primarily on Euro European cars, if I'm that not. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. The shop, the Eurofix, we mostly focus on like your your mainline, you know, European cars, BMWs, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Audi. Porsche, most of the things like that. Uh huh. What's the most unusual car you've seen come into Eurofix? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, we have, every once in a while, we seem to get these older Mercedes cars, and those are usually the ones that you just don't see a lot of anymore. Uh huh. Yeah, and and so many times people that have those, they bring back so many memories. They're they're willing to do whatever it takes to get the vehicle back on the road, oh, mainly really because are. it brings back so many memories to them. It does that they had when they had it at one time, or either they had one like it. Yep. and they want to uh, bring them out. Do you see this many times this time of year, and, and we get this, and we don't work on that many earlier model cars, mainly because, like we talked about before, a lot of the equipment has been phased out oh, yeah. that we have. But many times uh, a, a person uh, have a car, uh, either a Mercedes, uh, a, a, a classic car like a, uh, a GTO or mm -hmm. Chevelle or something like that, Mustang, 65 Mustang, and they'll this time of year, it'll, it'll be beautiful weather, 
and they'll bring it in, and they'll it, they'll normally get a gas tank, a, oh, yeah. a carburetor, <laughs> yeah. a uh, flush to fuel lines, all the hoses, all the belts, all the tires, and all that. And get yeah, it they all always up seem to. Par. This time of the year, everyone brings all their nice cars out, and it just yeah. I mean, you're talking about GTOs. You know, my service writer at the shop where I work, he has a '65 GTO, and he just that's a it's a beautiful car, and mm-hmm. he's done a lot of work to it. I mean, it, you know, it's been swapped to fuel injection, and it's just yeah, it's a beautiful car i know someone that would love to see that car very much and that's uh that's cat delorean her mm-hmm. father john delorean played a large part in the development well of the muscle car yeah in general but also gto's was a big part of uh, his career and uh i she, i met her well she was at our facility in augusta and oh, okay. uh at one of our car shows that we had and she met a lot of people and had a chance to spend a lot of time with her and there was a GTO sitting there, and she it just about brought tears to her eyes. Yeah. She, she enjoyed seeing that. It's such a nice person to talk to her and her husband, yeah. Jason. I feel like old cars like that just, just do that for a lot of people. I mean, like you're yeah. talking about, you know, they just bring back the emotions of when they were younger and or just, you know, what was their favorite car when they were a kid. And I feel like it's a lot of times now as you see people buying all those cars because it was cars that, you know, they're either their parents had or that they saw when they were a kid. Now they want all those cars and everything, so. Well, I, I did the same. I always wanted a BMW, and so and I, I, now I have it. It's a 2000 model, but it's a BMW. No, I, I, I'm seriously, I just love that car, even though it's a little bit of an older model. I, I just love driving it. You ready to go to the calls, Nick? Yeah. All right, it. here we go. Let's do it. Hello, Billy. Welcome to the CNC Auto Show, and what can we help you with? You gonna be able to put me on the Grand Ole Opry stage for this tech tip quiz? Uh, let me find out. Let me see if Mason will be able to put you on the stage. All right, you are on the stage, and I'm gonna read the question again. Jill owns a 2017 Tahoe. She had a job delivering blood to Savannah, Georgia, from Augusta to Savannah, Georgia, <coughs> last summer something to do with some of the blood that she was transporting cost her 2000 bucks in car repairs. How did some of the blood she was transporting cost her 2000 bucks out of her pocket? The company she was working for didn't even pay for it. And what is the answer? Uh, blood has to be, has to be kept cold. And she had a, a, a cooler that plugged into one of the portals on the car and uh, it was pulling too many amps, and it shorted it out, so she wound up having to get $2,000 worth of electronic work done to the vehicle. The top. Yeah, you see what happens here? Now, I'll come up with a tech tip quiz, and, and, and in my mind, I think that I've thought of all the options <laughs> all the available. <laughs> and somebody comes up with one I didn't even think about. That's a good thought, though. It, it, now, That's now, a Billy, very good thought. If there was a, a consolation prize, man, you would get it. You, you sure would, because that was good. But let me find out if Mason, let, let me see if Ma, what Mason has to say about that one and, and see if, if his thoughts on it. Okay. All right. Billy, you gave it a good shot, though, man. That was good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we sure do appreciate you calling. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. And the number to call is 800-224-9090. If you've got a question about your car, your truck, or your SUV, you give us a call. We're talking about places to visit in America, and we are also talking about cars you love. We're also answering automotive questions. Nick here is uh, ready to answer any type of car question, but also questions having to do with euros yeah it's kind of his specialty that yeah, i've worked on a little with. bit of everything in the time that i've been working on cars so <laughs> what's one of the more common things that you see that comes in the door nick as far as uh things that need repairs uh a lot of the european cars are a lot of just you know maintenance stuff i mean they have a lot more of a lengthy service schedule versus i think what a lot of the domestic cars show i mean you know there's there's time frames and everything from you know transmission services to brake fluid flushes and all that stuff so we do a lot of maintenance stuff and then i mean suspension repairs everything like mm-hmm. that i mean it's all that's one of the things i was going to ask you as far as uh brake fluid mm-hmm. fluid exchanges i think the european cars were one of the first models to really um see that they that were they how important were. it was and making sure yeah a lot of them recommend every two years there is a mileage something but a lot of the manufacturers vary in that but every two years is a pretty safe bet 
Yeah. And, and and some of the reasons for doing that, of course, brake fluid attracts moisture. It does. And that moisture, get uh, when it's inside the brake fluid, it can cause mm-hmm. uh, But also, the braking system works at a much higher temperature than it worked at before. And, of course, one of the uh, items that brake fluid has to be able to do is increase mm-hmm. boiling point. That's correct. It has to have a very high boiling point because you don't want to get up to uh, a certain temperature, and then all of a sudden, boom, your yeah, brake fluid starts to your, boil. Yeah, lose your then, brake feel and it, lose, exactly. lose the pedal and all that, yeah. Yeah, and, and so in the beginning, uh, when things would come up in a in a domestic car needed a, a brake fluid flush, and you'd say brake fluid flush, they'd say, that's crazy. I'm not, yep. <coughs> I'm not going to flush my brake fluid. And then as, it, as time went on and European cars, they were – more and more, all getting brake fluid flushes. Oh yeah, pretty now much everybody does it now too. Thing. Yeah, because like I was at the, I worked at a Chevrolet dealer for a while, and there, I mean, yeah, you talked to somebody about that, and they were like, "What do you mean? I've never even heard of that." And I see now, I mean, even the domestic cars are all that's becoming a, a service now too, is you know brake flushes and all that stuff just to keep it, just to keep obviously the system you know in good shape and all that. And I mean, even like I worked on some track cars, things like that, where, you know, you put brake fluid in as an even higher boiling point so that, you know, when they're out on the track, heating the brakes up and all that, it just, you know, you don't lose your brakes as the time goes on. Yeah. So, so doing things like flushing the brake system, very important. Cooling system is huge. Oh, very much so. Uh, because there's so many things, the cooling system is the same way after a period of time, the component that has to do with uh, corrosion resistance. Yeah, the corrosion inhibitors that they put in, in the cool. In, in inhibitors, just, that was the word I was trying to yeah, think of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that depletes over time. It does. And because of that, uh, you can build up corrosion. You start running into things like water pumps, radiators, mm-hmm. heater cores, all of these things. And, and years ago, that wasn't a big deal. I mean, because no, not people as much. keep the car 100,000 miles. And after about 10 years, 100,000 miles, they were getting rid of the car anyway, so it really didn't matter a whole lot yeah. if they ran into some issues like yeah. that. But now people are keeping their cars 12, 15, yeah. 20 years or more, like me. Yeah, and even especially, I mean, again, with the European cars, I mean, the, the cooling systems are so complex now. I mean, you know, there's air-to-water intercoolers for turbocharged cars, so you have more coolant running through more components, basically, yeah. and everything's got, you know, check valves and things that can just start going bad with, you know, a deteriorated, not-so-good, well-functioning coolant, I guess I would say. Yeah, and there's some things that can go wrong with some of those, and cool- if if they're not maintained properly, uh, that can make a grown man cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much so. Yeah, so, it, can get, so, it can be expensive. It can definitely get expensive. Yeah, but it, it, it is well worth it when you go in and do the things that you need to uh, maintain that vehicle, do the services as they're recommended. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to have a great shop like Eurofix uh, and many others around the country, but find a good shop to maintain that. Yep. Okay, we're going to pull over to the side for just a minute, and we'll be right back after these messages. Show. We are live in Nashville <laughs> for a fun time, and we are at the Shop Fix Training Academy uh, Training Center, and we are uh, we are with Nick Novak, and Nick is a lead technician at Eurofix, and we were talking to Nick about different things to do with maintenance on vehicles, especially on European type vehicles. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit about a brake system flush, brake fluid exchange. We talked a little bit about coolant system (laughs) exchanges. What's some of the other things that you see? Um, Power steering, maybe? No, most of the cars now are all electric for the most part. So you don't don't really see a lot of power steering systems that need service as far as that goes. I mean, mainly with that is just, you know, oil changes, keeping up on stuff like that. I mean... Mm -hmm. Those are pretty much your main services. And, you know, you mentioned about the uh, electronic power steering. That's uh, in the beginning, uh, we would have thought that there may have been some issues, but really we don't see this is on the domestic Asian side, but we don't really see that many issues with the electric power steering. No, we don't either. (laughs) Even with European cars, it seems to be a pretty reliable system, even if more, Mm -hmm. if not more than the hydraulic systems were, you know, other than failures and all that. If the vehicle has been in an accident. That's a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. When we see one that's been in an accident there, there's some big things that can happen there that you can get. Okay. We're going to lay the tech tip quiz back on the table. And the question was, Jill owns a 2017 Tahoe. She had a job delivering blood from Augusta to Savannah. Uh, Last summer, 
uh, something happened when she was doing the job last summer. Mm -hmm. But this year, something happened that had to do with her transporting the blood that cost her 2000 bucks in car repairs. And if you know what may have happened, you give us a call. And again, that number is 800-224-9090. Or if you have a question about your vehicle, uh, that's domestic or Euro, mm -hmm. you give us a call and we will, we will be prepared to answer your questions uh, that you have. Now, we were talking about different vehicles that we like and I'll, I'll ask you next, what's one of your favorite vehicles that you like, Nick? As much as I work on a lot of European cars and all that, my favorite is still, I really like the C7 generation Corvettes, the, mm -hmm. you know, like the 14 to, what was it, 20, I think, 19, 20, something like that. Mm -hmm. that the body style of those cars, it's just one of my favorite cars. Yeah, yeah. And, and Corvettes actually, for as long back as I can remember, has just been a favorite vehicle. It is. Uh, I think they first come out in 1953, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that. And correct. they uh, they have just been popular ever since. And they're just uh, really just about any year model now that you look at you like because even the later models going mid engine and all yeah. this other stuff. Uh, they are just an absolutely beautiful vehicle. They really are. The mid engine one that was a quite a step for them i feel like but it, it was a major uh a major change but i i've really heard some good things about it i do too it. actually my uncle has one and he he loves that car mm -hmm. now another vehicle that i i enjoy is the uh, did enjoy looking at it of course going back to some of the classic models that's always been popular i love that 67 chevrolet camaro no, you can never go wrong with that yeah and, <laughs> and it's uh it's uh, always been a favorite car, uh, and that's the Camaro SS especially. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the SS performance package uh, consists of a 350 or a 396 V8, and it had some chassis upgrades that made it a little tougher, uh, didn't sway quite as much, <clears throat> and it was just a, uh, a beautiful vehicle. Oh, it really was. I mean, they're just any, – any of the old muscle cars, honestly. I mean, my dad was always big into – you know, any of the late sixties, early seventies muscle cars. And mm -hmm. that's kind of where my thing with cars started was with my dad with doing that stuff, going to car shows and all that. And every time you see some one of those cars, it's just, mm -hmm. there's something do you about still, uh, do you still get a thrill of like a vehicle comes in and it's got a very unusual problem. Let's say the person may have been to several other places trying to get a, uh, an item repaired. Do you still get a big thrill oh, out yeah. of tracing that down? Oh yeah. That's always a fun one is trying to figure something out that, you know, <clears throat> they've been to a couple other shops and they couldn't figure it out and just, yeah, that's one of the more fun things of the job is figuring out something that somebody else couldn't. Mm -hmm. Now, with all the uh, changes in, in, in continuing to change uh, on vehicles as far as the technology involved, uh, do you embrace that or do you say, hey, maybe they're going a little too far here? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's always changing. It's always – it's this is definitely one of the jobs where – you're always learning. It's always, it's never this, you know, you can't stop learning. Cause if you stop learning, you're going to fall behind with all the new technology and all the new systems that they come out with. And I, I enjoy that side of it. I enjoy learning the new things when they come out and seeing all the new cars when the new cars come out and all that. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely challenging, but I, I enjoy it. Yeah. And, and that's one thing. It gives me a chance to mention something that shop fix has done here. Uh, shop fix, of course, uh, they, uh, they work very closer with things to do with people providing cust better customer mm -hmm. service uh, to the customers, and then they moved into helping service advisors be in yeah. uh, classes to be able to help service advisors find out <clears throat> what a customer needed yeah. needed to do. And then, of course, as time went on, they uh, they're now uh, have things that are helping the technicians themselves. Yeah, that's a, that's classes. a somewhat newer thing that they're getting into now, <laughs> but. They're coming up with a lot of new ideas for classes and, you know, training, things like that. So it's it's a cool thing because there's not – that's kind of a thing that's been missing, I feel like, in this industry a lot is, you know, proper training for technicians. And not even just the side of, you know, going and learning parts of the new cars, but actually learning, like, a process of how to get through certain yes. jobs on those cars. And that's kind of a thing that's definitely been missing, I feel like. I will 100% agree with that because there there's so many times that where some classes may – 
uh, you you go in and it may be for one particular car exactly. and it may uh, it, one particular year maker model mm-hmm. and you go in and you learn how to repair that one item or or certain system on that vehicle. Exactly. Whereas you never develop many technicians never are able to get training on how to develop the process. Exactly. They, uh, that they, you we go were just through. talking about. Yeah, that process is you know it's. It's not really taught in any other like the other school. Like you go to school for it, they don't really teach that too much. When you go to if you go to a dealership or you know a shop, may have something in place, but mm-hmm. most of those places don't really have you know any kind of set guidelines to that. And you know that's a big thing is the right process can get you to the right answer or you know the correction quicker. Well, one good thing on this show, what we do is we're we're talking to the person that drives those cars yeah. and and the ones that uh, are actually bringing them in. And I, and I think it's so important to let those those the operator of the vehicle know things that they can do to help that technician. Mm-hmm. Now, in my opinion, is it, one of the things that I like to to mention often is that if you have a problem, maybe even keep notes. Yep. But the main thing is look around. Just like if the vehicle starts to hiccup, or if the vehicle won't start, or if something happens. Uh, look, I mean, is it is it raining outside that particular time? Is it uh, are there any other lights on the dash uh, that are coming on yeah. at the same time? Do, are you getting a traction light? Are you getting a check yeah. engine light? Yeah, I mean, the mo- the more details that you know you can give to you know the service writer that can then pass it on to the technician just makes it easier for them to you know try to go toward where your issue is and exactly spend a lot less time with it that way, you know, so you're not chasing it and have to call them back and answer more questions. And yeah, the more, the most information you can give is, you know, the best way to get the best repair and the best, you know, service that you can get. Exactly. Let's go over to the calls real quick. I'm not able to read that. What's it say, Nick? Uh, Oh, here we go. Yeah. I was going to answer the tech quiz. Oh, you going to answer our quiz? Quiz. We need that because yeah. we're uh, we're winding down on time quickly. So we are going to put you on stage. Okay. Now that you are on stage, I'm going to read the Tech Tip Quiz again real quickly. Jill owns a 17 Tahoe. She had a job delivering blood from Augusta to Savannah last summer. And something to do with the blood that she was transporting cost her 2000 bucks in repair cost. Uh, how did some of the blood that she was transporting cost her, cost her 2000 bucks for repair costs? And all eyes are on you. What is the answer? The container that she was carrying accidentally filled over, leaked onto her seats and her carpet, and she had to uh-huh. have it all reposted. Oh, uh, and, and, and let me see what they say. Oh man, I am so sorry. Oh but I no! That was close. So I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I, I'm gonna just give you a big thank you for calling in and giving a shot for today's tech tip quiz. And we are all okay. out of time for this uh, this segment or this hour. And I want to say thank you very much uh, to Nick Novak for joining us on the yes, show for the first here. hour. You you gonna wait around for the second hour, oh, right? Of course. All right, he's gonna be here. And a big congratulations to my daughter, Alyssa, and her husband, Corey Hickman, on the birth of their son, Beckham. And we'll be right back with more of the CNC Auto Show. First hour, I want to mention again, some may may have missed it. But my daughter, Alyssa, and son-in-law, Corey Hickman, they live here in Nashville. And they were expecting their first child, Beckham River Hickman, to be born on Monday. And I had planned to do this show in Augusta and then drive up to Nashville on Sunday and be there for the baby to be born on Monday. Well, Beckham didn't want to wait. Beckham decided that he wanted to be born early. Uh, So I found out on Thursday that Beckham would be arriving on Friday. So I put a whole bunch of stuff in the box, and Mason Rogers, our producer, he made everything happen to where I was able to do this show live in Nashville. And as it turned out, uh, my very good friends here at Shop Fix, who I do a lot of work with also, uh, play a very small part, but I do play some uh, part in helping there. Uh, but Shop Fix Academy Training Center, 
they made it possible for me to come in, be able to do the show live here. And uh, just want to say how much uh, that means to me, but also how much just shop fix means to me. They have done something that I had hoped that would happen one day, and that's provide great training to not only management people in and technicians and service advisors and just people in the whole automotive industry make it possible to provide a much better customer experience. Very much so. And, of course, that has improved the uh, reputation of the automotive repair industry tremendously. Now, on top of that, I told them that I would love to have a great technician to talk to while I was here. Well, they introduced me to Nick Novak, and Nick is a lead technician at Eurofix, which is one of the premier shops in the country Mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, European automotive repair. And Nick is here with me. So now if you have a question about your car, your truck, your SUV, or uh, and Euro cars, you can give us a call, and we will answer your automotive questions. We have also got a, a tech tip quiz that's laying on the table, and we'll be talking about cars that you love and we'll be talk uh, that we love, and I'm sure many of you love. And we'll be talking about places, uh, great places to visit in America. And during the last hour, we did definitely mention Nashville. We definitely did because I love <laughs> coming to Nashville. So many things to do. Not only uh, things to do with country music, uh, but also things to do with just hiking, boating, uh, hi- um, running, motorcycles. Yeah, uh, you can do just about everything. There dirt bikes. Beautiful, beautiful lakes, beautiful, you know, I mean, everything's just, there's trails everywhere to go walking, you're hiking, mm-hmm. and just a, just a must-see. If you're making a list of places you want to travel, uh, you definitely want to put Nashville on that list because it's a, it's a beautiful place. That's how and, I ended up here. <laughs> yeah, and of course, if you have, if you have any problems on the road, uh, Eurofix uh, has, uh, uh, had uh, great facilities. Yep, yeah, we have uh, multiple locations all throughout this, you know, Nashville and the surrounding areas of yeah, that. I think Bell Mead, Murfreesboro. Yep, there's Bell Mead. There's one in Nashville, Franklin, Murfreesboro. Yep. Yeah, Franklin. just a a lot of a lot of places. And thank you again to Shop Fix for doing so many things to help the automotive uh, repair industry. Uh, and plus, I'm gonna mention to you. Give us a call eight hundred two two four nine zero nine zero. If you have a question about your car, your truck, or your SUV, you give us a call. And again, that's 800-224-9090. And that's Eastern time. And that's anytime 8 to 10 on any Saturday morning that you can name. Here's the tech tip quiz. Jill owns a 2017 Tahoe. She had a job delivering blood from Augusta to Savannah. Last summer, uh, something to do with the blood that she was transmitting cost her 2000 bucks in car repairs. What happened with the blood that she was transporting that cost her 2000 bucks in car repairs? If you know the answer to that question, give us a call. and Or if you have a question about your car, 800-224-9090. Okay, Nick, we were talking about a lot of different things to do with not only domestic cars, but, uh, but also we were talking about uh, Asian cars, European mm-hmm. cars. Um, and we've talked about some of the things that we do to maintain those vehicles, for instance, brake flushes. Yep. Um, we mentioned that so many of the vehicles now with the uh, uh, electronic power steering, uh, it's very you, you don't have to worry about the fluid anymore. And I really can't think of any heavy maintenance that you would have to do on that system. I, I've, no, I've, I don't really. I mean, yeah. there really isn't. I mean, you basically just have an electric rack and a steering shaft. I mean, maybe your steering shaft goes bad. That'd be about no. the only thing that... <laughs> so you have your... Uh, so, so you also have things to do with your... Um, with uh, your transmission. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a question that I get quite often. On most European vehicles, how often do you need to to change your transmission fluid or exchange your transmission fluid? Most of the manufacturers are give or take 60,000 to 75,000, somewhere in there. BMW, for the longest time, was what they used was considered lifetime fluid, uh-huh. which, I mean... It was the same fluid they use now that needs to be serviced. So as much as it says that the service on those is, you know, it's very detrimental to the transmission of it lasting for an extended period of time. But yeah, usually sixty to seventy five thousand or yeah. so. And I think that on on most vehicles now, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on this, but it's just uh, my thoughts. The reason that varies so much is because the temperature of the transmission fluid 
uh, vary so much. It and does. the temperature that the transmission fluid gets up to is directly related to how quickly the transmission fluid deteriorates. Yeah. Uh, it starts losing its ability to uh, to lubricate the fast moving parts uh, and uh, transfer the heat away from the fast moving parts uh, as at the hotter it gets, yeah. and 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 that of course falls in line with why you'll run into one vehicle that a person has drove very lightly back and forth to work uh, at slower speeds and. And you'll check the fluid, and it'll have eighty thousand miles, and the fluid still be nice and perfectly clear, yeah. uh, no discoloration or anything. And then you'll check the same vehicle that somebody was driving, like I drive my car. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do the same. Yeah, and uh, and it will be, uh, and it will be terrible. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely does vary, like you said, with the temperature and all that mm-hmm. too. And, I don't know if it's also has something to do with. I mean, a lot of cars now have such a low viscosity fluid in it too. It used, to, you know, transmission fluid used to be so much thicker, and mm-hmm. now it's you know, it's like going to like a zero twenty oil where it's very yeah. thin, pretty and much I, like sure water. That, yeah, that is water. It's very thin, and mm-hmm. I don't know if that if it just wears out a little faster because I feel like the the service intervals have definitely come down from where they used to be. Yeah. But of course, the other thing to t- uh, play a, a part in that is vehicles now have so much more horsepower than they, they, than they had. You, you just plain have more power. Yeah. I mean, and pretty much everything has turbochargers and all that now. Yeah. So everything, you know, most, you know, my wife has a Kia. And, I mean, it's, you know, it's a four-cylinder car, but it's a, the GT model. And it, uh-huh. it's like 300 and something horsepower out of a four-door sedan. Yeah. And it just, yeah, it's just there. Everything has more power now than ever than it used to. And, of course, with something like that, you, you're going to have, uh, without question, uh, you're going to have more power taken off, which is more power that has to be transmitted from the engine to the to the drive wheels. Yep. And because of that, you're going to generate more heat, so transmission fluid will get hotter. Uh, but also, you're going to be going faster, and you're going to need to stop. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, uh, Americans want things to fit in the, their uh, category of size. Uh, so many times we're making things that are go faster, they have to stop uh, stop better than they did before, but they have to be smaller yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we want something a little bit smaller yep. and, or we want a lot more horsepower packed under one small area. So I think so many times uh, there's a lot of factors involved. So I think because of that, I think what's really important is to have a – a shop that you can trust. Yeah. Uh, now this show plays in many other places. I mean, we're we're in we're live in Nashville now. Of course, uh, Eurofix and there's a lot of other beautiful shops around Nashville oh, area. Yeah. Also, same way with Augusta. Our shop is in Augusta, and there's some great automotive repair shops in Augusta, and there's other ones in other places around the country. But the main thing is. Wherever you're listening to this at, build a relationship with your shop so that when you run into issues, you're able to call them and say, this is what I'm running into. This is what my car's doing. And then when they tell you you need a brake system fluid exchange or a transmission fluid exchange, you feel that trust. Yeah, they'll trust that they'll trust that you're actually giving them the right information. It, exactly. You know that they need it. Okay, we need to pull over for just a little bit and grab a cup of coffee. We're going to be back on the road shortly with more of the CNC Auto Show. <laughs> Show. We are here live in Nashville doing the CNC Auto Show. Uh, my daughter Alyssa uh, had a baby, uh, was supposed to be due on Monday. A baby uh, that's named Beckham. Beckham decided not to um, not to wait until Monday. So I had already had the show planned. So our producer, Mason Rogers, Got everything working to where we could get everything here and do the show live in Nashville at the Shop Fix Academy Training Center, which is a great place for anyone that has to do with automotive, the automotive business, to come get training. And that comes from all aspects, anything from management technicians to just anywhere in there. Beautiful place, done a lot of great things for the uh, for the automotive industry and this building that I'm in here, big two-story building, classrooms all over the place. Yesterday there were hundreds of people running around in here, and uh, it's uh, it's it's been a really good thing for the industry. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, sure has. And I have Nick here. Nick Novak is a lead technician with Eurofix, and Nick has been helping to answer automotive questions and 
one thing that we um, that I wanted to ask you real quickly. Now we were talking about European cars. Something else that is just starting to move more over into the uh, domestic Asian side more and more is AGM batteries. That's very much. I mean, European cars have been running AGM batteries for a few years now. And, and I mean, yeah, those batteries have been really been used for the last 10 years or so. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's um, and and I feel like that. Uh, oh, and a place where people can go to to learn more about those batteries is autobatteries dot com because they'll tell you the difference between an AGM battery and a lead based battery, and why it's important. Some of the things, that, ways that you can choose the battery that's best for your ve- vehicle. Just autobatteries dot com. Fantastic spot. We're gonna go to the calls and let's go over to. Wayne, Wayne, welcome to the CNC Auto Show. And what can we help you with? Well, I have a uh, 97 uh, Toyota 4Runner, about mm-hmm. 418,000 miles on Whoa. it. Now, Wayne, and I'm I ha- not going to be able issues. to tell you much. Matter of fact, I should be asking you questions. Uh, 400,000 miles, and, and you still uh, still sounds like you uh, like the car or love the car. And what can we help you Oh, with? yeah, I'm going to keep it. Well, I had a couple little issues, but one was a catalytic insufficiency code. My truck started running kind of rough last Friday or a week ago. Mm-hmm. It got worse over the weekend. Went to my friends at Augusta Mobility. My buddy Adam put his yeah. scanner on it, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it came up with a uh, P420 code and uh p1700 code and we started you know i went home started looking at it uh or trying to but uh i guess you know i just tested my o2 sensors mm-hmm. for resistance and it you know the values are 11 to 13 and it's saying they're like nine five and i replaced them you know maybe three and a half years ago do i need to keep doing any testing or just go ahead and uh go get new O2 sensors for this thing. Yeah. Well, that's a question that's on uh, a problem that you run into from time to time on domestic, Asian, and Euro cars. So I'm going to let Nick jump yeah. in there. I mean, if the converter fault does that, and it's, you know, if it's, you know, running rough. And I can't hear Nick. Um, Nick's having a mic issue. So ho- hold on one second. Let me see if we can tell what's going on. All right, Mike, tr- uh, Nick, try it again. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I okay. can. Thank you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we got it now. We right. we uh, we troubleshot the issue. We ran the trouble code chart and we repaired it. <laughs> so yeah, so you've got insufficiency faults with rough running. You said too, it was running rough too. Yeah, it was kind of it was rough running. Now I did have a uh, some you know the uh, the between the mass airflow and the uh, sensor, the boot there, you know, was yep. dry rotted some, and the, I, it, the dry rot became a hole, and I changed <laughs> all that this over this week, uh, still running rough and still has that, you know, well, like I said, has that code in it. So, okay. you know, I just it, it did seems to be, is a it few just minutes. One, it's one bank then, I assume, so you're looking, it's, good. it's well, a V6. Well, right? actually, yes, yeah, a V6, 3-4, okay. SR5, uh, and it just, uh, like I just got up there and got all the plugs cleaned and taken apart. And I put the resistance on the uh, heat, on the, you know, the O2 sensor. And right. it's like, it's showing 9.4, uh, 9.4, 9.5 on the resistance. And the Toyota, it said it was supposed to be like 11 to 13. That's and close. I didn't know if I needed to go through all the other little, I did have 12 three power coming in on the other side to plug Uh, so i didn't know if i needed uh, to keep going and yeah are you still on the original converters as far as you know uh no i replaced the converter uh catalytic converter uh within the last year and a half okay i think uh, if time runs together you can kind of run into issues where you know they can start to come apart and things like that right make sure that wasn't going to be an issue and was that a factory converter, yeah. or did you use an aftermarket converter? 
Uh, well, I ordered one off. It wasn't the factory one, and that's why I was kind of I wondering if I just made a big mistake. A, an aftermarket converter may be enough to to be completely legal and may do its job uh, fairly good, but it might not be quite enough to make the computer happy. Yeah, uh, especially after yeah. it gets some wear down. So I wouldn't completely discount that converter because uh, I have had cases yeah. where. I had to go with a factory converter. Now, the other thing I'll mention uh, is, of course, I always like all the trouble code lights to be off. But, of course, you already know this, mm -hmm. that that converter is not right. going to be running. Uh, yeah, that's vehicle. also true. Mm -hmm. And I canceled my codes out. Uh, we canceled them, and I, it's running rougher, or was running rougher, and I can't get his machine now, won't pick up any codes on it. Mm -hmm. Are my buddies, and uh, so I'm not showing any codes, but it's not running good at all. <laughs> Sounds like he's probably going to need to yeah. go after symptom diagnostics, yeah. is right. Right, we go after issues. Hey, we're gonna pull over just for a sec. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, no problem. We're gonna be right back with more of the CNC Auto Show. The Shop Fix Training Academy or Shop Fix Academy Training Facility, and I am here with Nick Novak. And Nick is the lead technician at Eurofix, and we are talking about cars, answering questions. And we were talking with Wayne, and Wayne had a 97 Forerunner with over 400,000 miles, which is absolutely fantastic. I love seeing that uh, with people. It, that means that he has been taking care of his vehicle and asking questions. Now, Wayne, we were talking about the catalytic converter code. Is that correct? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. And Nick and I were talking a little bit during the break. 20. And, of course, one of the things that we want to look at uh, closest is the running rough of the engine. Yeah. And I, what I always like to do is I like to tell everybody some of the basic things that they can do to the vehicle that they wouldn't be wasting money anyway. And, of course, things like you mentioned that boot on the air intake, replacing that, that was good. Uh, it has to be done regardless. Uh, the spark plugs, they have to be done uh, if it's due for anything. My guess is you kept your spark plugs changed very nicely. But if they're Well, and I was going to try to do that now, too, or this weekend oh, okay. again. Well, I would. Uh, uh, if, I found one of the wires had a little bit of a. You know, one of the wires had a little bit of a gimp on the outside coat covering of it. Uh -huh. So I was just going to pull them in. I haven't gone through my records to see the exact last time that I, or how long, what mile it was that I did all that, but yeah. uh, figured it's not going to hurt. <laughs> yeah. I would look at all those type things and do anything that is normal maintenance need to be replaced. But with the readings that you've given us on the O2 sensor, and I was going to see if Nick agreed. Uh, I'm not sure that I would go spend a lot of money on O2 sensors and then other items because there's a chance that that could be wasted money, and that's what we don't want to do. Uh, it, things like that boot and spark plugs and all your normal stuff and things that you can see that needs to be done anyway, definitely go ahead and do it because if it repairs it, you won't need to have any diagnostic run, uh, test run. but. A it, different issue. I've seen yeah. that before yeah. too. Yeah. And I so I wouldn't chase the converter code too uh too hard. I would look more at chasing after the uh what's making it running rough. And if you get that, there's a chance that converter code might be something that may not come back for uh a year. And if it if it'll go a year each time you clear it, yeah, I believe I would just clear it once a year. <laughs> yeah, you might just definitely have some other issues and let it go. Right. Okay. Well, like I, I, I guess uh, also uh, it uh, like started out driving okay, but then as it got hot, that's where it really seemed to start getting rougher going down the highway, and uh, you know then it actually shut off on me on the way to my friend's shop the other afternoon. Mm -hmm. On the second time, I went back the next night to you know get his coke machine again to see what it would do, what it showed, and then it. You know, like I said, it didn't, sh you know, it hadn't shut off since then, but it also, you know, I've got it to the, you know, you know, I've got it part right now. So, 
Sometimes I do you know, mention like induction thing to get service. rougher is it got is it got hotter. Yeah, you could benefit. There's a chance you may have built up some carbon in the engine and doing a induction service. Of course, 400,000 miles, it seems like you're keeping that one on the road pretty good. So it, it, you may not have had much time to build up much carbon, but that's something else to think about. But I think that I would do those normal things, possibly even including an induction service. Uh, now, yeah. that's something that you can get per, done professionally at a shop. Many people use companies like BG Products, which – uh, BG is a wonderful product, and they have an induction service to do it. But also, there's other products on the shelves that you can buy if you like to do things like that yourself. Okay, so you, you so yeah, and I was going to try to call y'all at some point just check on those type things because it is older, and I do like my vehicle. And and just recently, I had two people in, two people with me, two you know, on a couple different occasions, and they were like. This truck is runs very smooth, and then yeah. now all of a sudden I've got a rough running truck. <laughs> yeah, those are those and, are very uh, very popular. Even those year models now, people absolutely love them. And and it was a gift to me. I didn't buy this truck; somebody gave it to me. And wow. uh, you know, when I so it's got you know, sentimental my value also. She, yeah, it, yeah, it's got it has, it's a three owner vehicle, but my the second owner drove it for the longest period of time and then she moved to Atlanta and didn't want to drive it in uh -huh. Atlanta traffic every day, forty miles to work and back. So she gave it to me. And, and uh, every time and you get in put it, you say thank you. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I and I've put a hundred and twenty something thousand miles on it since she gave it to me. And uh Fantastic. but you know, but I've known the truck for you know a long, 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 long time. <laughs> wow. And I appreciate it, and I'm you know, just going to keep driving it. So well, you say uh, don't the pursue call. the – okay, don't pursue the uh, sensors yet and just look at the other stuff. I probably wouldn't those sensors quite yet. I definitely think there's you got something else going okay. on first that might just be a result yeah. of that. We we always go after okay. the, the most inexpensive things that need to be done first. So do those, and then after that, if okay. you had to, I believe you could consider some diagnostic tests if you had to do that. All right, thank you. Okay. Hey, thank you. Have a great Appreciate day. Appreciate the call, and the number to call is 800-224-9090. If you have a question about your car, your truck, your SUV, you give us a call. And we had talked a little bit about the AGM batteries to mm -hmm. where many uh, European shops have been uh, – European manufacturers have been using AGM batteries for years, uh, mainly because – the electrical system is so it's such an important part of the vehicle now. We talked about like the electric power steering side of it. You know, you had to have extra power for that. The, the stop start systems when you come to the stop, yeah, shuts the car off. So there's got to be power to to run all the other components in the car. So while it stops. we did mention that if someone wants to learn more about those batteries, they can go over to autobatteries.com, learn mm -hmm. more. And we have been talking about the training in the automotive field. Um, the Shop Fix Training uh, or Shop Fix Academy training facility here that we're doing the show live at is an absolutely fantastic place uh, for people to learn uh, learn more about how to provide good customer service and to repair vehicles. But another awesome thing that's come along is there's ng it's by ngk and ntk they have a online presence and yeah. that is uh um online ngk online and that is an opportunity to learn a huge amount more uh and talk back and forth with other technicians mm -hmm. so that's a that's a great thing to have you ready to go to the calls Absolutely. okay here we go. We will go over to, let me see, I don't see that. Um, welcome to the CNC Auto Show. What can we help you with? I think we that one, either I did something wrong. Again, one of the things that we do here with the CNC Auto Show, this is all real world Hello. stuff. Um, we are actually live here. And we have this uh, the, this box here with different things, and it's a little bit different than doing it in the studio. In the studio, things are a lot more polished up and 
done, but here where we at doing it live, we're making it work. And I want to say thank you to our show producer, Mason Rogers, for doing all the things that he's done on making this work. And we're, we're covering a lot of different things, uh, right now. Uh, some of the things that we are covering has to do with the, with the automotive, uh, European type vehicles that we're working on, uh, that Nick works on and he has, uh, he's done a fantastic job of, uh, mentioning some of the maintenance items that they do with many of the European cars, which we work on European vehicles also. Uh, but we probably don't see near the numbers because, uh, Euro Eurofix sort of specializes in the automotive, uh, in, in more of the European type vehicles. And with that, you see, uh, many, even exotic type vehicles. Is that correct? Yeah. With Eurofix, not, I mean, we do work on a lot of Porsche stuff like that, which is a lot of the most, you know, the exotic stuff that we see. Um, I mean, I've worked on a lot of things throughout the, my career before this. I worked at a shop in New York that we specialized on, you know, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, race cars, things like that. But I mean, yeah, it's we see a lot of cool stuff. It's it's a good time. The Euro cars are definitely nice. They're they're you know higher end than most of all your sorry, domestic cars and things like that. Like you see a lot of the technology that comes to the market seems to come in those cars first, and then it kind of trickles down into the rest of the market. Fantastic. We I'm gonna read this uh, tech tip quiz one more time, and then we're gonna pull over for just a little bit. Jill owns a 2017 Tahoe. She had a job delivering blood from Augusta to Savannah last summer and now she's faced with a two thousand dollar repair bill on her car and it has something to do with the blood that she was transporting if you know the answer we really need a, uh, the answer to this tech tip quiz today uh really bad so give us a call answer our tech tip quiz 800-224-9090 we'll be right back we are live here in nashville tennessee and we are having a fantastic show. I have Nick Novak here with me. Nick is Nick is uh, answering automotive questions. Uh, he sort of specializes in European cars, uh, but he works on all type of vehicles. And there's so many things. Uh, Nick, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but over the years, there's so many uh, vehicles that have just kind of melted together. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it seems to be that way. I mean, most of the European cars, they're all very similar. They all use a lot of the same systems and everything, and it's just applying the knowledge to each one a little bit yeah. differently. But And a lot a lot of those have melted over into the domestic oh, very much and so. Asian-type cars. Yeah, a lot of uh, those. So you'll find Mercedes parts on a uh, on a, a Ford or, mm -hmm. or different vehicles, and, and it's just a um, it, it's just been kind of exciting to see that. But it is a little tricky to stay uh, up to date on all the where the system is at, and really, it's almost impossible to completely do like we did many years ago and say, "Hey, this is uh, the timing on that vehicle is this, or this is what this is what you set this on, or this is what the O2 is supposed to read." The, it, it it's almost impossible. So we have to have repair information that we look at and all of this information at our fingertips to be and, and know how to find it to be able to repair cars now. Yeah. I mean, even with, I was talking with actually the guy who was at our the seminar here that was yesterday. He's a very knowledgeable guy. And like we were talking about with BMWs and all that, the information, the lack of information and like the data that they give you with the scan tools is there's nothing there. Like, you, like O2 sensors, you were talking about that. If you go in to look at that through, like a scan tool, there is no information. Mm -hmm. They give you, they don't, they basically take that away. They don't want you to see that stuff. So mm -hmm. it, it makes it even harder to find that. Yeah. And then finding ways, you know, finding ways around all of that stuff to get the information that you actually need. But more and more, some of the manufacturers are finding out that if you give the people the information that they need to repair the vehicles, then the consumer's vehicles going be, will be repaired correctly and it'll go a lot of miles they'll be happier with it yeah. so when they need a new one they'll go back to that vehicle they go back to so that one. Yeah. it's kind of a a balancing act yeah it Ready seems to, go to, be, to calls? sure it seems to be tipping the other way like you were saying like it it went away for a while where they were kind of taking that information away and now they're kind of flooding it back with so that you can get the information so you know they can actually fix the cars if they do have issues i agree because i think they are 
Uh, it, the ultimate goal is making the, cus- the consumer happy. Exactly. That's what that's what counts. Okay, we will go to the calls and we will go over to Chris. Chris, welcome to the CNC Auto Show. And what can we help you with? Uh, yes, this is Jason. Jason, okay. Um, Jason, I had Chris. Something happened up here. But anyway, have you ever considered changing your name? <laughs> no, Jason, well, I'm just going to. Actually, I have. <laughs> what can we help you with? Uh, I was going to attempt to answer the tech tech quiz. Oh, my goodness. Let me put you on stage real quick. Okay, you are on stage. I'm going to read the question again. Jill owns a 2017 Tahoe. She had a job delivering blood from Augusta to Savannah last summer. And something to do with delivering that blood or transporting that blood cost her 2000 bucks in car repair. What caused the problem that she had to pay 2000 bucks out of pocket? All eyes are on you now. I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb here and say that since it was the summer months, the temperatures were high, especially around, I guess, the Savannah area, that her Tahoe was running hot. And the only thing that she had available was the blood in the car, and she actually added the blood in where the coolant goes Ooh. in order to replace the coolant to try to cool the cool the engine down, and that just wreaked havoc on the cooling system. Wow, that sounds like something that would be on Friday the thirteenth, part eight. <laughs> Woo! Um, yeah, I, I, now I never really even sure. thought about that. Um, but you know, Jason, I'm gonna have to mention this, and it may not necessarily. Uh, help you um but i'm gonna give you the opportunity for it to help you but um i never really said it was anything to do with human blood that went in the vehicle or that uh okay. that she was transporting uh so uh i'll give you one more shot with it but wait wait a minute wait a minute jason i'm gonna have to give you uh something on the other first let me see if i can let me Okay. All right, Jason, I am, uh, I'm so sorry you didn't get that one, but you, I'm giving you a second opportunity here. Uh, may not have been human blood that caused it. And you said one term is something to do with running hot. So, uh, Jason, what is the answer to the tech tip quiz? I, I know you're trying to help me out with this, but I'm just drawing a complete blank right now. All right. Well, let, we we are be hoping that someone that the next caller will will grab the 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 hint that was given there, because something can happen. This is this is a little tough one. This is this might this is be a tough too one. tough. This but is we're going to tough one. We're going we're going to give one other person a shot. But I was going to try to. Uh, this might be just too hard to give enough hints for. Well, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this, Jason. Here All we right. go. All right, Jason, um, we're talking about blood. Now, does blood necessarily have to be transported? Um, it, blood can come from several different places. It can be in a container that is being used to deliver blood somewhere. But what else that would be in wetlands area. There's a lot of wetlands near Savannah. And during and in the summertime in those wetlands, uh, you have water, you have heat. What kind of thrives lot in of that mosquitoes. area that loves blood? That would be a lot of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Now, what can happen with mosquitoes? They're carrying blood. So what can happen with, what, what can mosquitoes do to a car? Uh, they can uh, actually gather up in high enough quantity to stop up the radiator on the vehicle. Much well, let me think about this. Let me run it through. The, the uh, let's see what the judges are saying. Wait a minute. They're smiling. I see one of them. He's smiling. He really is. <coughs> oh. Oh, Jason. Jason, it looks like you are the winner of today's tech tip quiz. You're absolutely right. The blood she was transporting in the car didn't cause a problem, but the blood in the mosquitoes 
that were sticking to her condenser outside the car did. So every night she would ride past these wetlands <coughs> full of uh, blood-filled mosquitoes, and they stopped up her condenser, which cut the airflow, which fried her compressor. And a compressor condenser job run a, runs about 2000 bucks. Uh, so with that, now she, uh, she, she, she had to pay the 2000 bucks just because she was transporting blood, but the blood was inside the mosquitoes. Jason, does that add up? Yes, sir, absolutely. Thank you okay. very much. I'm a pretty sick puppy, huh? Okay, I'm going to get you to stay on the line, and Mason is going to write down your information. Uh, having to do so we can ship you all of that prize package and congratulations on winning today's tech tip quiz it's time to shut down this week cnc auto show congratulations to my daughter Alyssa and son-in-law Corey hickman and we uh we have, and congratulations on the birth of beckham river hickman and want to give a, a big thank you to our show producer mason rogers and a great big thank you to Nick Novak here. He's uh, We're here at the Shop Fix uh, Academy training facility here. And Nick has been answering questions. We had a great time. See you next week oh, on the CNC. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Nick. <laughs> See you next week with more of the CNC Auto Show. The <laughs>